It's all led up to this moment. Ten years ago, the original Iron Man film came out and wowed audiences, and then we were told that there's going to be more. A lot more. An Avengers film, in fact. It'll be a massive mark in cinematic history. And there's been a lot of movies since then. I um, probably should have counted before we started, but it's been a massive legacy from the Winter Soldier, Captain America the Winter Soldier, validating Captain America as a hero to all of us, to Mark Ruffalo's appearance as the Hulk in the first Avengers film. It's all come up to this. It's all come up to the Avengers Infinity War. Now, I will give up a heads up. This is going to be spoilers. This is going to be full-on spoilers. So if you haven't seen the film, go ahead, go watch it, and then come back. Otherwise, let's continue. Now, Heather, what are your initial thoughts on this film? I, yeah, I do have with me today Heather and Luke, and I'm Dylan, and this is your wrong. A great film debate. Now, Heather, what are your initial thoughts on this film, having seen it? Well, those are some strong thoughts on Heather's part. Luke, initial thoughts? I really enjoyed it. Yeah. So, my my expectations going into this film were very low. I was watching the trailers. It just yeah, looked like another the CGI. Didn't, the trailers didn't really wow me at all. No, I was not interested at all. I was really just going to it for the obligation of it. Unrendered Thanos. I wasn't excited until the marketing came out with... Ten years ago, you all wrote it, and you all fell in love with. I haven't seen that. Years ago. That yeah. was me. I just said that then. No, that's not. They didn't do no, that. No, that's what their whole marketing I, campaign I, has been. I haven't. I didn't see any of that. But I, I saw it. So okay. So none of us were particularly excited by the film. No. That's not fair to in, say. Not until about a month ago. Or Thanos. Really, Thanos looked a bit silly what in the trailers. Tony Danza. <laughs> I have to say. I don't know what Tony Danza looks like. Until I actually saw him in the film, I appreciated him a lot more. Until you saw him in the film. Yep. In the trailers, it was a bit like... Oh, right, right, right. Uh, wait, what? The way they showed him off in the trailers, it was a bit like, oh, okay, he's just going to be like this blockhead guy who's going to be super... Strong. But you were happy with the film? I was happy okay. with him the way it was I misunderstood. I misunderstood. I thought you were saying that until the film, you were very satisfied with him. Yeah. I was like, well, that's not... That doesn't make any sense. Except for, you know, cranky Josh Brolin in the first Guardians of the Galaxy, what, three, four years ago? Jesus. All right, so... To, to those at home... Who might like a quick summary of what's going to be probably the biggest film of the year? I would not be surprised. Mm. Avengers: Infinity War is the culmination of the Guardians of the Galaxy, the Avengers, pretty much every superhero in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This doesn't touch on the television shows at all. Coming together to fight the big bad of big bads, Thanos. Uh, Thanos seeks the six Infinity Stones. Two of them are on Earth. He's already acquired two of his own elsewhere, and there's just two more missing. That's where we start, basically. And then from there on, it's basically two hours of watching our heroes just get their asses handed to them. Over, no, no, over. No, 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 no. They come close. They get. They their get very fucking to close, them, actually. And they get so close, and then a couple of motherfuckers that can't rein in their shit. A couple of fuck motherfuckers. It for the rest of them. That's true. That's very true. So, all right, where do we start with a film like this? All right, I really okay. don't know. <laughs> what were you most looking, Heather? What were you most looking forward to, to seeing in this film? Any particular characters or arcs or anything? Uh, Vision and Scarlet Witch. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, I was. No, I was kind of looking forward yeah, to that. Yeah, I was really, I was really pumped for them. Um, I was really um interested in going to uh like in actually seeing Wakanda again. Yeah. So I was really keen for that. You were um, the only one of the three of us who actually enjoyed Black Panther. Yeah. Um, Luke and I are just racist. Then, <laughs> um, that is not true. <laughs> who are these? She would I, say that. I wanted to see. I kind of wanted to see how Guardians fitted fit into. Oh, the, fit in with all yeah. the characters. Yeah, yeah. Like, I did how they all melded that. together. Yeah. What, what about um, you? And Doctor Strange. Doc, and Doctor, yeah, Doctor you're Strange. Big, you got a heart on for Strange. Yeah. What about you, Luke? I love me the Strange. I was actually curious to see how. Um, like Heather, I was actually curious to see how the Guardians of the Galaxy group would interact with the Guardians mm. of the, the, the Avengers. Avengers. I love, I love how Asgard offered a uh, like a thing in school to learn oh, yeah. group language. Yeah. yeah, it was an elective. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they had electives in school before humanity was born. <laughs> That's insane. Well, how old did did Thor say he was? Hundred and. 1,000? No, he was no, more he was than 100. 15, he was 15, 1,500 years old. 1,500 years old, yeah. He looks good for his age. <laughs> yeah, I'd definitely say Thor was the thing I was looking forward to most. Um, 
I mi- I forgot how much I missed Rocket. Yeah. yeah. I I said to Heather after the movie was finished that Rocket Bradley Cooper as Rocket Raccoon might be one of the most underrated voice performances because it doesn't sound like Bradley Cooper. No, it doesn't at all. It is one hundred percent its own isolated character, and it's fucking amazing. Yeah. He's he's easily my favorite character in the MCU now, I especially to, team to Thor. Yeah, I do have to say one thing: is Thor the last of his kind? Well, he because said his he, entire race. They was said on that, that ship yeah, they, was but he, up. well, no, he also said that Thanos wiped out half of the Asgardians. Yeah, that's Asgardians but are hardy I'm thinking, people. I'm thinking back to the film. That was his entire race. That yeah, was, but that doesn't yeah, mean they all died on the ship. They might not have been on the ship. They could have. Escaped, there may have been escaped but, pods. Does, yeah, they, they do say in it like yeah, half uh, that he wiped out half the Asgard. Half yeah, there's Asgard. probably they'll probably touch on that in the in the second film. Yeah, yeah. Was, Along I, with a great deal of other things that will need to be touched upon. <laughs> like uh, oh, what was it? Um, I'm gonna get that arm. <laughs> there's, a, there's a yeah that great moment where Rocket Raccoon. He, he gets that, that twinkle in his eye for stealing another body part. <laughs> Holy shit. That never would have occurred to me either to have, to have put a moment like that in there. That's such a, such a clever and like moment that really speaks to the understanding of the characters that the writers had mm. that mm. they included that. Like, that's so fucking funny to me. get that on. <laughs> it's like, oh, he, he asks that's my gun. Everest. <laughs> he, asks, he asks for the gun. Yeah, he's he? like, how much for the gun? He's like, I'm not selling the gun. He's like, how much for the arm? <laughs> he just walks away. Oh, I'm going to get, get that, that arm. arm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so did anybody have any massive concerns going in? I yeah, it was, that it would like, end the way it fucking did. Well, okay, but no. We knew that was going to happen. But any yeah. like specific concerns? So my worry was that... I, because uh, I always let everybody else go first and then I never get to talk about my stuff because I've already forgotten because I've got the memory of a goldfish. Um, my concern was that it was basically going to be Avengers again, but with an even less interesting bad guy. Because Thanos, as far as we'd seen, he Wasn't just wanted to conquer the universe. But it was pretty standard, like, I'm angry. Just just let me yeah, finish, yeah, Taylor. Yeah. Just stock standard. As far as we'd seen, like, yeah, we had, like, the courting death thing, but they don't really use that in this film. Well, the, one of Thanos' big things is that he's in love with death because he can't die. Oh, yeah. He can die. Well, he doesn't believe he can. Mm. And that's why he's in love with death. He, like, curses Deadpool to never die because Deadpool and death had a thing. Yeah, yeah that's In right. the comics. Yeah. So they don't really use that in this film. I don't know if it'll come later uh, in, the, in the new film mm. afterwards, which is yet to be titled. But... Mm. So Thanos was a big concern for me because, again, he'd just been a large blob. And then in the trailer, he just looked kind of like Homer Simpson. Yeah. Um, and then my other big worry were the, like, the armies because we got the Chitauri in the first Avengers yeah. and yeah. we got the Ultron bots in Age of Ultron. Yeah. And it's like, I can only do this dance so many <clears throat> times before I don't care anymore. Mm. So I was like, ah, oh, they've got, like, the Halo Elites in this one and they'll just be they're kind of cool looking like I love a thing with teeth and like it looks kind of like a dinosaur I'm always up for that but like I was like okay it's going to be another faceless army so those are the two things I was worried about mm. we'll do a round and then we'll come back and say how we felt about those things we were worried about when we're all said you, you guys follow? Yeah. so Heather what was your biggest worry? Um, more so it was just mainly about Thanos. My big thing was that he was going to be just this another run of the mill. Bland. Yeah. yeah. Mm. End of, you know, whatever. Red Skullish. Do- yeah, doomsday kind of thing. Yeah. And yeah. I. That's how he came across in the yeah. trailers, definitely. But then I was shocked because. Oh, no, I guess shocked is the wrong word. But I was taken back by the fact that they had um, they had that big thing with him and Gamora. Mm. Like well, that, no, let's let's not just say what you're worried about. We'll get to whether or not we were left still worried after the film. After, okay, All right. yeah, well, I because I know you're going with this. This is your resolution. I just want to bring out the problems first, if okay. you understand. Well, yeah. Well, my main thing so was the bad. you thought he was just going to be two dimensional. Yeah. Yep. Um, I was worried about who they were going to be killing off. Because yep. there was a guarantee that they were going to be killing off someone, and everyone was prepping for. Okay, but know, that's the that's main... not really. A... I worry about the quality of the film. Well, I was... Because then how is that going to affect the rest of the film? It's true. It's a good point. Well, <laughs> uh, your worry was not for naught. No. Um, and then... 
uh, and I guess just mainly was how the, how they were all going to interact with each other because mm. everyone had had like big minor, cast. Yeah, everyone had had like run-ins. I guess <clears throat> would be fair to say there'd been small crossovers. Other, yeah, but nothing substantial enough no. to be like, oh, we're all in. It's this finally together. happened. It's finally happened. Yeah. We got Michonne, Black Widow, and Scarlet Witch all chilling. Well, oh, that was that was chilling awesome. and killing. That was an awesome scene. Um, War and chill. Yeah. That's the new Netflix and chill. Luke, what about you? What were your biggest concerns? I was, yeah, mainly main issue was with Thanos. I was worried he was going to be, yeah, two-dimensional, boring. Yeah. and Despite being I a was... 3D character. But, um... <sighs> um... Yeah, I was kind of hoping he wasn't going to be like um, Stephen Wolf all over yeah. again. Which was awful. He gave off a big Stephen Wolfy vibe in the trailer. Yeah. I'm here on Earth to get Stephen the MacGuffins. Wolf. Um, he was a bad guy in Justice Death. League. Right, yeah. He's yeah. the MacGuffin hunter. Yeah, the MacGuffin. He's the Indiana Jones of MacGuffins. Mm. Yes. <laughs> MacGuffin's just a funny word. I don't want to. I don't want to cut you off, Luke. But I did remember one other thing that I was quite anxious about was Captain America because I was going to be worried that it was going to be another Tony Cap fight. Not fight. They got but shit like, to do the, first. Yeah, like it was going to be another. We're going to lead everything, and we're going to do uh, okay. all the things. Like I thought it was going to be. But no, no, they took a different approach. Yeah, they, they did, split them up. Really... They didn't. They were not in the same room. Nope. Not once. Never. No. Um. And a motor. Well, they're not even on the same planet. Whole thing. No. Yeah. <laughs> so my, so as I said, my big concerns were the army and the villain. I'll st- I'll talk about the army first. Holy shit, they were good. The the thing when they when the army broke out the evil army broke out and mm. started going off the first shot you have of them is they're inside the cargo hold and they're just ripping themselves to shreds they're in a frenzy and I was like that's fucking terrifying because the Chitauri were just soldiers right yeah, yeah. yeah these things were feral and they were just set loose and that scared the shit out of me well they were killing because that's themselves. a hard Literally, army they were dying yeah just that's, that's a fucking scary army. So that made me really happy because it's a different kind of fight now. Yeah. It's not just shooty, shooty, bangy, baby. It's like, get them off, get them off. Like, there are moments where characters are like swarmed and There's you're like, oh my God. There's a sense of oh urgency God. and panic. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. and because this, really is such, this is such a <laughs> massive film, like, and you know that like a bunch of these characters have had their three film run, like, you, there's, all bets are off. You don't know who's yeah. going to live. Except for obviously, so we knew Spider-Man was going to live. And we knew Black Panther was going to live because those are the two sequels that come out after the end of Phase 3. Yeah. yeah. We knew those things. We we had those things that we knew. And Doctor Strange. <laughs> anyway. Um, the other thing I was worried about was Thanos. What I did not expect this film to do was make Thanos the main character. Yeah. I was... Yeah. Yeah. And I think that is probably the smartest thing they could have done. Yeah. I think we probably spent more time understanding Thanos as a character than we did any other villain in the MCU. And yeah, even like, Loki, perhaps. Yeah. Well, don't, don't bring up Loki. Don't bring up Loki. With mm. Thanos, it's... Because we've only seen him little small portions. We've only seen him when he's just talking to people. Yeah, walk, walking the not, walk and talking yeah, the talk. Not Sitting his personal chairs. life. Yeah. And um, his, uh, like his little story and why he's doing everything. And, and it was really... His interaction with his... Daughter. With Gamora, yeah. It was yeah. fucking fascinating. Yeah. What an interesting villain. After all of that, after all the years of me and being like, oh, he's just going to punch dudes and be angry. <laughs> punch yeah, them really hard. <laughs> Which he does do. Oh, he, he packs a punch. He's, he's got a mean left be cross. A, um, a, a forgettable, bigger bad guy. Yeah. But, like, like, he really. They really brought it. Mm. Thanos has absolutely satisfied me in the villain quotient. Mm. I'm very, very happy with that. So those are my two big fears, and both of those fears were quickly dispelled. Mm. Um, because, yeah, like if, if you've seen the film, you know that we spent a lot of time with Thanos on his own looking back on his life. And there's a thing, in, like the whole monologuing thing can sometimes throw you, can sometimes look silly because it's like, you got shit to do. What are you doing? This uh, is a wait, guy... What are you talking about? Though? In general, monologue. monologuing. Like, when yeah. villains monologue, they're when like... Villains yeah. monologue, they talk but right. he okay, is so powerful. Mean, like He's got a built-in <laughs> excuse. <laughs> he's so powerful. He's got the time. Yeah. <laughs> yep. He's not worried. And like yeah, I don't know. It made it made him very interesting. He was a very thoughtful a and a very pure villain. Everything he did was within reason of how he worked. Mm. It was all logical and it all functioned the way it was supposed to. He talks about truth, how he never told Gamora to lie and how he never lies. 
He says the whole film, my goal is to wipe out half of all life on it on, in the universe. There was and, no bullshit. Like, and yeah, fair, and then he says, no sit bullshit. down and watch the sunset, and then he's done. He's right. done. The film makes it clear that's exactly what I wanted to do. He doesn't want to rule. He doesn't want to control. He wanted to balance the universe and then put his gauntlet down. And that's exactly what he did. And that, to me, makes him far more interesting than any other bad guy. Why is that? Because how do you fight that? He doesn't want to fight anymore. He's done. Mm. Now it's revenge. Now the Avengers are avenging the world. Yeah. Now they have to go after him. Will he defend himself? How Will he fight them? Because the only thing they can do to bring everything back, and they have to because there's sequels to be made yeah. Yeah. with characters that are now presumably dead, KIA. Well... Um, They've got to get the the eye of Agamotto. Uh, uh, they've got to get the the time gem. Yeah, the eye of Agamotto. Yeah. Well, the eye is destroyed. They need the gem. Yeah, but they yeah, the, the need the um the, the, the stone of time. Yeah, yeah, the time stone. Yeah. So is he going to give it to them? Does he? What, I don't think he will. What's he going to do now? Mm. What does the soul stone do, by the way? I'm not actually sure. Does it like commune with spirits? Is that the idea? Is I it kind of like it, the, I think it is like um some sort of ethereal yeah. like the like, stone in um. Keep talking. I'll get back to In it. Deathly Hallows? So I've got on, on a fandom thing, the properties of the Soul Gem are... Uh, the Soul Gem is sentient. It has a desire to collect souls. The gem can attack another soul in various ways. The gem can reveal information by peering into another's soul or using the cold light of truth. So that's, I think, where that whole wisdom thing came from. Yep. Um, in the movie. Uh, the gem can trap souls inside itself. I in think that's what happened idyllic, to Gamora. Yeah. In an idyllic world. Idyllic. Yeah, idyllic world. So that's where that tranquility scene is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the gem's wielder can access the memories and skills of those imprisoned within the soul world. Okay. The gem yeah. can revert beings to their natural state. The gem protects its wielder from soul-based attacks. The gem can disrupt the en- anima of a soul... Anima. Anima. That's the life force, isn't it? Anima of a soul with a karmic blast rendering the target temporarily unconscious. Certain beings are immune to this attack. That's that's what it's got in properties. Okay, so okay, so what we're hearing is that she was she's in the gem. So like, in order to obtain the gem, he had to sacrifice her, and then in doing so, he collected her soul within it. In that she was the first soul he took. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. That's interesting. That's very weird. What a weird villain. I just... There's so much you, myth in this film that I love. Were you shocked at that point? Okay. Pretend that you didn't have that little bit with, where Gamora has the flashback, you know, where you see her as a child with Thanos. Pretend you don't see that whole intera- like that interaction in the throne room. All right? You just... As Thanos as he was before the start of this movie. Would I and Gamora that he loved as she was... Sorry. Would I have thought that he loved her? Yeah. Well, no. Without without Infinity War, it would have been difficult to say. But he was her favorite child. But mm-hmm. the moment they see each other, it's you know he he's soft around her. Like yeah. when he's torturing Nebula, she's like stop stop. She's like like pushing him. No other character in the fucking universe can do that. Yeah. yeah. Only her. Only she is allowed to get that close and do that. Mm. So that was when I knew that that he loved her. And that's how. Yeah, when he's not like not when she cries because before that's when she thinks he kill she kills him, and she starts breaking down. Well, that crying. was her. That was her though. That was I knew she her, loved but... him in a weird way, like she was connected to him. Yeah, but she also hated him. Mm. She hated him enough to destroy him. I thought it was that interaction with um, Quill was interesting between Thanos and Quill. That was like Dad's vetting ya. There's a thing. moment. That's what I got from that. There's a moment. It's either in a movie or a TV show. I cannot remember where there's a massive interaction between like a big bad and like a side a side character who's like a protect like a good guy and the bad guy goes like oh i like you and then leaves and everyone's like what the fuck does that mean what does that mean i feel like it's a buffy moment what do you mean a buffy moment you have to explain it was in i feel like it was in buffy like there's a scene where like a villain catches someone's scent or something i can't remember there's a moment like that in something where the the bad guy's just like, oh, I like you, and it's like, that cannot be good for me. There's a bit with Spike and... Um... Well, 
the way he maybe it was Spike. I Terror. think he was seeing a little bit of himself in um in Quill in Quill because of um well he Quill he res- was going to shoot um, he, yeah he yeah that's he was probably like, where he connected with um he's willing to give up yeah. what it takes to get what he thinks is right yeah yeah and that was the thing there's that's that's the other thing about Thanos he's such a pure character in that he respects it's not about hate or rage no. or war he doesn't like war he respects will and mm. strength which again makes him a really compelling character i just want an honorable mention to um the people that designed that nebula torture scene where you like, oh, where the camera go pans that's... over and you see what they're actually yeah, doing. She looks the, the illusion yeah, yeah. The that's really rough Ooh. that was really hard uh. <laughs> fucking hell this yeah, film much. did a great job at like putting the audience into the fray and then leaving them in the dust with all the heroes. Mm. You're thinking the same thing as them. You're all thinking, what the fuck do we do now? Mm. Mm. Fucking hell. All right, so was there anything that didn't happen in this film that you really wanted to see? I wanted to see Ant-Man. I love Ant-Man. I wanted some Ant-Man. Mm. No? Heather, anything you Come that back didn't... to me, I'm thinking. Luke? Anything you wanted that you didn't get? I'm not really sure because I was I had like low expectations. Yeah, low expectations really and fucking was, helps. From what I saw, it pretty much fit every um, everything I wanted. It was a decent film to watch. Mm. And I watch it again. Yeah, I'll watch God it again. yeah. Tony Stark or Captain? I don't know if I can watch it again without having the second one ready to go. Yeah, because yeah. that would be very hard. But Captain America, Tony Stark, one of them was going to die, and they didn't give me either. Yeah. Oh, actually, I do want to talk about. Tom Holland as Spider-Man. Okay, yeah. Uh, I talked to you guys about this already, um, but I don't think I've ever said it on a podcast. So one of the things I loved about Spider-Man Homecoming was the scene where all the rubble falls on him and he starts freaking out. And I'm like, that right there is why this Spider-Man is special because he's a kid. He's not pre- he's not a kid who's a hero or anything like that. He's a fucking kid and kids have those moments. Mm. Kids aren't always cool under pressure. Nobody's cool under pressure, no. but especially children. And it's in those moments that I really empathize with his character because all the power in the world doesn't stop fear. Mm. Yeah. And there's a similar moment in Infinity War when he's dying or disappearing, basically. Yeah. And he's losing his shit. He's and freaking he's cl- out and he's, he's clinging clutching. to like this father figure, Tony Stark. Yeah, like, don't let, and... don't, why, why am I leaving? I failed. I'm sorry that I came. I've ruined everything, blah, blah, blah. And it's such a great fucking. He's, I don't know how much of what he does is deliberate and it's just instinct or accidental, but he does it well. Yeah, he does. You don't believe... You believe it's the... Ca- he's a kid. He's, he's, yeah. yeah. He's, he's a kid. He does stupid things. He makes stupid decisions. He says stupid things. I wanna, but he's got I, a good heart. Another honourable mention to the best friend where he's like, I need you to create a distraction. <laughs> <laughs> Instantly, he's <laughs> off. Just like, we're all oh going to die. And that's it. Because he just... He didn't even Seize have to... the alien yeah, spaceship. Just, just a, ah, that's it. <laughs> So the Russo brothers directed this film and they'll direct the next uh, Avengers film, untitled yet. They directed Winter Soldier and Civil War. Knowing that, how did this film fit into like what you expected from them? Pretty good. Yeah? Yeah, no. Is this, I... is this basically what you thought you were going to get from them? I, mean... I didn't actually know they were the ones. Yeah. That... So does that, are you surprised or does it like make things make sense now? Uh, it makes things make sense now. Yeah. The reason I asked you in the car who directed it is because I thought it felt like a uh, civil war. It did. Um, but better. Yeah, and not just because civil all the, war not, not, pales in comparison. Not just to this. because all the characters were in it. That's not. That's not it. It just it it had the same feel. It had the same. Yeah, look. same it, like. There's an it, urgency it, in their films. Yeah. yeah. Things are and, fast. And you don't, and, 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 and I don't, as much as I am left wanting more, I don't feel like... It, you don't feel like it was too fast. Yeah, or no. that there was too much too quick. Like, like what, like it was, with, um, it was, what was that v- other movie that we just seen recently where they had crammed everything? Uh, oh, some it. fat movie, I don't know, uh, I can't remember. No, Ready what? Player One, maybe? No, oh, maybe, but that was because of, that, that was a different reason. But I think that was the one I was... That it I was, was a perfectly about. ladled out film. Yeah. They were very economic in their storytelling. Mm. Uh, what a pre- pretentious statement. <laughs> yeah, going into it, so I, I love I love Winter Soldier, as like as just as an as an action espionage film. Mm. 
Civil War, I loved when it came out. It's starting to wane for me, I think. I don't know. I think the novelty's worn off. I'll always because love... Because you've got these other movies now. I don't think that's it. I don't know. Like, it's the same for, like, Doctor Strange and the first Guardians of the Galaxy. Like, they're great in the moment. And then once you've watched them two or three times, like, okay, I'm, I'm a bit over it. Like, I disagree, but that's because I like I understand that. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the scene where Paul Rudd is holding on to Iron Man and uh, laughing... Or I think maybe it was War Machine and laughing because he's big now. Yeah. Yeah. That there's a part of my heart that yeah. my my shriveled black heart that holds that moment inside. That may actually be <laughs> my last memory before I die in many years to come. Oh yay! That's, no, I meant something. No, like my very, very, very last. Obviously, like my brain's fried at that point. But we don't have to get into that. That's uh-huh. dark shit. <laughs> That's some dark shit. So yeah, like I love Winter Soldier, Civil War. I thought the tone of Civil War was a bit all over the place, just, and it made me think like maybe they were really thrown in the deep end as directors, having to juggle all these characters all at once. Yeah. Before you go on, but then so that made me think Infinity War might have the same problem, where it's a little bit like a little bit juggly, a little maybe lopsided. Mm. Mm. I was really impressed with how they handled it. I thought they retained all of their characters' personalities very well. They mixed them all together really well. They had good combinations. The fighting styles and that all went together really well. Yeah. I noticed they also decided to split them up and mix them around a little bit. Yep. Yeah. So Rocker went with Thor. You had... So did Groot. Had at least three different franchises mixed together at any given time. Yep. So that's... And that's what we want. That's what we want out of these movies. That's why we're fucking here. I feel like looking... Like with everything you guys are saying, and if you look back on it, I feel like maybe Civil War was their testing ground for all yeah. the characters. Civil War was together. absolutely and then testing you come ground. Back into this, and it's just like, okay, what? Because everything that you don't like about Civil War, or that you feel like could be improved in Civil War, they mastered it in this one because they made Thanos the main character. Yes, and that really made this film stand out. Yeah, they've they've gone. We have a villain problem in in Marvel. How do we fix that? Well, how did how did Loki become a great villain? Well, people fell in love with him. They like him. Oh, I still don't like Thanos. Thanos can get. I kind of like Thanos. I, I sort of like him. I oh, kind of like him. I get it. I yeah. fucking get it. It's it's hard, but I get it. And it wasn't an easy decision for him either. That's mm. the other thing. It was a sacrifice. He didn't just go. Oh, they've all got to die. He was like, I've seen poverty. I've seen decimation. I I've would, seen overpopulation. I would agree with you, if not for the fact that every time the, po- the Squidward was on screen, <laughs> it was, you have the pleasure at dying but for Thanos. But Thanos didn't Your do that. Your lives make sense. Yeah, that was... we don't, we but don't... he allowed it. He allowed himself to be treated like So you might say, yeah, he's not in it for glory and riches, but he fucking took that shit for a ride. Did we? Did he? We yes! Saw... Did, how... Did we see his acolytes with him often? When in every other movie, he's maybe around, maybe for him it was a necessity. Likes. Maybe for him it was like to have this help. They need to worship me because up until this movie, you think he's this. You you think he's a horrific conqueror, which he is. This terrifying <laughs> overlord, which he is. That you know demands to be ruled. You know demands to be um, worshipped. worshipped. Thank you. Um, and then they do. They give him that. You show the. They show you the backstory. They give him. You know, a little bit more substance, perhaps. But he's still a fuckwit. He's not a fuckwit. He's still a lad. He's still a jackass. Yes. Thanos is a lad. Yes. You keep using that word. I don't think it means what you think it means. Yeah, you are using that word completely incorrectly. He's not a lad. Fucking Thanos running around in his his shiny tracksuit pants. (laughs) Well, he he had the bling. He did have the bling. (laughs) That's true. (laughs) He did have the bling. Hey, like and he had the chip for it. <laughs> Alright. We got any theories about what happens next? Okay, so so again, for those at home, this is a massive spoiler podcast, so half the fucking universe dies. Thanos wins. Yeah. That's what this movie is about. It is about Thanos getting what he wants. Mm. And half the universe dies out. There's one guardian of the galaxy left, that's Rocket. The original Avengers are left, but all the exterior ones are gone. Spider Man's gone, Doctor Strange is gone, Black Panther's gone. Nebula's still around though. Nebula's well. still around. Is she a guardian? I guess she is. My mistake. Oh, she's like she's from in the and, Guardian in and out. Of okay, so Guardian. Nebula and Guardian are, are still around. Groot's gone. Like, yeah. they're a, a massive swath of characters has just been removed. Nick Fury's gone. Yep. They're all gone. And he put out a call to Captain Marvel. Mm. 
What mm. happens next? Obviously, Black Panther, Spider Man, and Doctor Strange are coming back yeah. because they've all got sequels coming. Yeah. So, does that mean they're all coming back? Is Vision coming back? God, I wish Vision would come back. Don't, don't, just, just my heart. The time can't gem. Take it. The time gem is obviously what's what happens next. Yeah. Yeah, and obviously, and also well, 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 the Avengers maybe, are maybe, coming for Thanos. Did you notice not... what had happened to his arm? Yeah, the was gauntlet like, was the destroyed. Gauntlet, yeah. yeah, but did you notice his entire arm all the way up to his yeah, neck? Yeah, it was all like mangled. Um, yeah. I didn't see that. No, it was like all veiny and like. I sort of saw it when like he left, but I didn't see it when he was looking at the sunset. Was it still mangled? Yeah, yeah. I didn't see no, that. That's his he... his wound in his chest was gone, but his entire arm was like. Was he still up. wearing the gauntlet? Yeah. Yes. In the when he was at the sunset. Yeah. Because yeah. the gauntlet was fucked up. Yeah. I think it's fused to his hand. Oh, okay. And now. Uh, so, yeah, okay, oil. so the time gem, and the, the, this is what happens. There's a, uh, Tony Stark gives a big speech in the first Avengers about how you might win, Loki, but we, if we fail in defending it, you can bet your ass we'll avenge it. Yeah. Yeah. That's clearly what happens in part four. Yeah. And then there's a time gem. Like, is there anybody alive in the universe who can wield the time gem with enough strength to take everything back? I was and, say and will Peter that be Quill, a cop out? I'm like, oh, he's dead. <laughs> but, well, I mean, the Guardian said that uh, his father said that without him, he doesn't have the celestial power. Yeah, yeah. no. Oh, he's, yeah, he's, he'll die. If he's I don't basically... know if that's true. I have a feeling that that's not going to be the truth. Thor also didn't do too well against the stones touching him. Did you notice that? When what well, with the power gem to... when um, he was yeah, being he just, tortured? Yeah, he just put it. That's up a power gem. That's the idea. It wasn't and that he was wasn't just touching him. He was hurting him. I know, but. The thing was, um, it wouldn't, it wouldn't harm beings that are able to wield it. But see, the thing, the thing but is, but we may not, Thor Thanos may not be able to wield Thanos it. Thanos couldn't handle them without the gauntlet. Yeah, the gauntlet is what harnesses their power. Yeah, like he could, he 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 doesn't. If you notice, yeah. he really ve- barely touches them too. He only and touches he, them when he has them yeah, one by one, and then he puts them to the gauntlet. Yeah, I feel like he only has the strength to wield one at a time. The gauntlet, the gauntlet is what gives him the ability to control all of them. them. But, um, I, I think a god, a god would be able to. I would argue that a god and, uh, and uh, Thor's and definitely that, at full god strength now. Oh yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still worried about Groot's um handle. There was a big theory that um Doctor Strange would be able to bring back Milner because of his because of the the. Time gem. Yeah, yeah. But I don't think that's coming back. I don't want it to come back, if I'm honest. Well, now he's got a brand new weapon. Yeah, it's awesome, too. <laughs> Thor at full strength, especially after Ragnarok, is incredible. That was terrible. What a sight. Yeah. Uh, I love... Uh, you know what? And another honourable mention to... Um, Peter uh, Dinklage? Uh, yeah, Peter Dinklage. And As also... the biggest dwarf you've ever seen? Yes. And um, uh, Bruce uh, Hulk. Um, oh, <laughs> So what's his name? The actor, the actor, Mark Ruffalo. Mark Ruffalo, big honorable mention to him. Yeah, you're all fucked now. He said screwed. <laughs> screwed, but still. He was very. He happy. wanted to say fuck. He's still wearing the same outfit from Thor Ragnarok. Have you noticed? Yeah. Yep. That thing That's is when in he sees, tatters. Because when he sees Tony for the first time, he's like, "Hey, Tony, your pants are too tight." Oh, did he? No, I wish he does. Oh, so you wish he, I wish he oh, does. <laughs> like, oh, you. That's incredible. So, okay, so the Avengers are going to try and kill Thanos and the time gem, someone's going to get hold. Is it going to be a cop-out if everything goes back? Are you going to be no, mad? Is it going to no. be like, well, none of it makes a difference now? I don't think so. I think that what will happen is you'll get Captain Marvel and that'll be her back. That'll be her backstory. Like her, okay, yeah. Her big backstory. And then at the end of Captain Marvel, you're going to see the start of how everything's going to fix. Okay, but that's not what it. I asked. Just let me, just let me. Fuck. Um. <laughs> Audience, I'm I'm really really scowling. She'll she'll become a part of it, but I don't think because I what I think is going to happen is that they'll they'll make the journey, they'll get to Thanos, but by that point there will be things that are irreversible. So they'll they may get Doctor Strange, they might get one Avenger that you might not because it's just too obvious to use. The times so it's too obvious to be like use time so and do this do that, you know. Unless or Thanos reverses everything, he wouldn't reverse it. I mean, he does. Have you the... wouldn't have thought he loved his daughters either. Well, one of them. It wasn't too shocking though. Like that wasn't because they set it up. Yeah. So they may Luke might be right. They may set it up in the second one. 
it might be that after all of it, he's not happy, and what he really wants to do is die, just like in the comics. I think he's gonna die. I think once they get oh, he'll die. Would have already be dying. Yeah, he dead. Maybe what's gonna happen is he's gonna take it back far enough to like one of the first assaults, and he'll just let them kill him. Maybe. Maybe. That'd be a bit if of a Thor, cop too. If Thor had just moved that axe, just up. a little what? further up, yeah. Well, you mean straight between the eyes? Yeah. Yeah, kill the brain. Just yeah. gimli that shit. Just just my gimli. axe is embedded <laughs> in his <laughs> brain. <system. laughs> he oh. is mighty. <laughs> oh, jeez. Is it, but are you going to be upset if that's the end? Is that he reverses time? If anybody, somebody reverses time and it all goes back to normal? I don't Cause, know. Because who was one of the first big ones to die that has a sequel coming? Because Black Panther, Spider-Man and... Um, Doctor Strange all died during the big war. Yep. So Lo- well, like a scene. Or Loki. Or... Loki was the first big one to die, so he's probably not going to come back, no. which Lo- is a pity. Uh, there's Loki, then Gamora, then I mean, you could also count like all of Xander. <laughs> I mean, we don't know that Xander's dead. Xander's dead. Yeah, dead. He said he destroyed, decimated so, Xander. So. so I guess what, like the only way to get your sequel characters back. Is to go back. I guess it would go back to the moment when he was killed, like when Thor hit him, because then mm. you've lost Vision anyway. Yeah, Vision's already gone. Yeah. So Don't the the ones me. that really hurt will be gone. Yeah, I don't know. I just don't but see then, Tony but, Stark, but, but, uh, know, Tony but, Stark, and Captain America surviving these. But that these would movies. actually be that would actually I, be really good if they keep Vision dead because then that I leaves Scarlet Witch to just go. It gives her a good eight. a good arc. Yeah. That was the other thing. I do want to talk about that real quickly. Um, is she supposed to be as powerful in the films as she is in the comics? Yeah, oh, yeah. she because she's. I know she's one of the most most... powerful characters. I mean, they're all one of the most powerful characters in the. Yeah. Series, but she can. The, the, it's kind of like the bosses can... in Bloodborne. When you look up your um, how to kill them, they're like, "Now this is one of the most powerful bosses in the game." I'm like, "You said that about the last ten guys." I'm on the same fucking level. Mm. But okay, she's in the comics. But I would have thought there was going to be a moment in this film where she was just going to explode because she has a power very much like the ether in the comics, where she can yeah. change reality. Yeah. I want. Uh, do you think the but red her power, stuff her, in her, her powers, powers is supposed to look like the ether? Wasn't it? No, her powers came. Her powers came from Vision Stone. Her powers, yeah. the mind gem. Yeah, is no, that right? No, no, no. Yeah, because no. it's the it's Loki's. They are mine. Yeah, it was Loki's. Shatters and creates visions. I think she's right. I think the scepter is what could, was what turned the twins into what they were. Experimenting on them, because they because remember they break. Yeah, they were experimenting them. So yeah. I would have. I think Nerds, she's right. Flock to me. I think she's right. I think the scepter is what did it. So, yeah, because yeah, um, she lets Tony because her and her brother let they Tony let him Stark take it, take, take the staff, but they already had the powers at the point. But that's because they got the staff from the institution. Yeah, where they because had the Hydra was where they experimenting were. on them. Yeah, using the scepter, it would seem. Mm-hmm. It's just there's so much to it. So it would make sense that her that that's why it all kind of interconnected for me. I'm like, why would she? Oh yeah, right, because because she's that's where thing, her power yeah. comes from. Does she lose her? I mean, she's dead now, but it doesn't matter. She's not dead. She's gone right now. Oh, yeah. Eviscerated from existence. Yeah. All right. This is one of our longest podcasts in a while. Might have to wrap we, it up. How yeah. long are we going for? 42 minutes. Hold oh, no, no, no. It's and worth it. You, I mean, this is such a big film and there's so much to yeah. talk about. All yeah, right. There's a lot of talk we about We should do two parts to this. this We're not going to. <laughs> Part two will come out when the next film comes out. <laughs> Heather, final thoughts on the film? Don't, don't, it's t- it's Luke, too final thoughts on the film? I really enjoyed it. Yep, uh, me too. I was actually more, I was actually kind of, um, it was refreshing having it the turn the uh, horrible. Mm. And because, refreshing? Yeah, because every movie uh, is always refreshing. Here, let me sum up a Marvel film for you. The heroes come up, the heroes fight a baddie, the heroes are badasses. A new baddie comes up, maybe he's a reflection of the hero. Oh. Uh, Reflection knocks Hero down a peg. Hero has to find the inner hero hero of Hero and then <laughs> fights the baddie. Baddie dies. Everyone lives happily ever after. There might be a moment, but that's it. Yeah. That That's that's what the these movies are like. And Avengers, uh, Infinity War was like, <laughs> okay, I like that. I like that, except for the bit where they get back up. <laughs> they get knocked down, but they don't get up again. <laughs> they, they, they're never going to get back up. That was definitely the case with the Hulk. 
Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Bunched this... him down and he wouldn't get up. I sometimes look back on like the older films and I think like we're never going to have that moment for ourselves. We're never going to capture that. I'm never going to have the wonder of watching Indiana Jones for the first time in a cinema and be like, oh my God, what is this? I'm never going to get to see Jaws and be like, this is insane. I know nothing about this movie. Oh my God, it's so good. Or like, why doesn't that shark look right? We're never going to have those moments. The more accurate. Yeah. <laughs> I'm never going to read Dr. Hyde and, and uh, Mr. Hyde and Dr. Jekyll and go, Oh my God, Stop they're the same guy. It gives a shit. I'm never going to read it and go, oh my God, they're the same guy. I'm never going to be surprised by that. And it was really nice coming out of this cinema and going, I cannot talk about anything right now because I am surrounded by people going to see this day. movie. And it was opening day. And I, I, this was very much a like Darth Vader was Luke Skywalker's son moment where I'm like, keep your mouth shut. Mm. We say nothing. Yeah. And it was nice. It felt yeah. like being part of a cinematic event. Yeah, I don't know. It, it, you know, it warms the, the small metal compartment of my heart. I thought it was black. My cockles have been warmed. Metal can be black. <laughs> all right, guys. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, uh, listening, and all that good stuff. Uh, as I said before, this was Heather. Say hello, Heather. Oh, Bob, you say goodbye, Heather. Heather! <laughs> God damn it, Luke. Just do the bit. <laughs> goodbye, no. Luke. Goodbye, Heather. Goodbye, Dylan. Goodbye, me. If you enjoyed, go ahead, like, and subscribe and all that good stuff. And uh, check out our website, secret-source.media. We're also on Facebook. Uh, we just put up a bunch of photos from Supernova uh, in Melbourne. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.